let's uh, get on with uh, the uh, programming. We looked at the commodities markets, quite a number of issues that are making uh, the headlines as we speak. You, you, you see oil prices around the world uh, being part of the meltdown that we saw uh, Friday through to Tuesday. Uh, we hope that is tapering. Then this morning we saw a Brent crude about 63, uh, 65. I thought we were just still uh, doing a little bit this but I see some bit of a weakening there. Shale production is coming back very strongly, and it looks like the Americans are coming very hard at the rest of us. Let's get uh, uh, one of the members of the financial derivatives uh, companies, uh, economists and research analysts to take us through uh, the burning economic issues as we uh, mix a little bit of our own with the, what's happening with the rest of the world. Luda Miller uh, Desola here live in the studios. Good morning. Good morning, Boston. Yeah, I, I thought we I thought we were going to keep doing a bit of a decent uh, a pricing when it comes to crude oil, but I, but I was disappointed early morning, 5 o'clock, woke up, turned on the TV, and saw that crude is around 65. Yes. Uh, yesterday we were above 66, there about, uh, I mean, mm -hmm. on, Tuesday, on, uh, on, on Tuesday, on Tuesday, yes. uh, and about in 48 hours, we we're down almost $2. Mm. Yeah, so, um, well, really, the, the crude oil market is very volatile. But what, what was the major driver was that um, the U.S. production, like you said, there were reports um, from the EIA showing that crude inv interest inventories went up, as well as there was expectation for an increase in shale production by up to 1.2% in the month of February. So the market sort of just adjusted itself um, um, following that news. No, really. no when, when the market is volatile, I like it. I like volatility to the upside. Not okay. volatility yeah. to the downside. Yes, yes. I really like volatility to the upside. Yes. As long as you are the one collecting the money. Well, <laughs> well, the thing about volatil uh, volatility of any sort is just, it's just, it's very fickle. It can can be up today, down tomorrow. So I guess if it's in the upside, it gets a little bit still, bumpy. It's still good. Yeah. So there's no way for you to um, be able to plan or like people who are, who trade with energy. So you just have to go long term, unless you're going to give you. If you go energy. short, yeah. you're gonna have you, know, you got a, a lot of uh, blood pressure. Yes. There. Mm. Yeah, well, it's been a little bit decent. I like, I, I can manage the blood pressure if the price is going from 65 to 66 to 67 to 70. I mm. love that. I can mm. drink to that. Mm. But when it starts getting a bit choppy, mm. then I wonder what the shell guys mm. are thinking. Do they want to match us in this game? Do they want to overtake OPEC mm. uh, just before the next meeting? I think essentially, I remember saying that we, when the prices was at 71, we were sort of wondering what happened to shale production. Like, right, usually when the price is coming up, we see them ramp up production. But in, in the last rally of, of early January, we didn't see them ramp up production. So we're sort of concerned, but it was kind of good anyway. So maybe we're like, okay. Maybe but then, so now they're, they're back at it. They're back and in so it, we almost expected them to start ramping up. We were just wondering when they were going to start. So I guess. And, and how much pushback? we're going to have as far as price is concerned. Do you think uh, we'll still be able to hold our shit at 60? Yes, yes. I definitely think it's going to stay above 60, but we may, I don't think we're going to go back to the highs of um, 71, 70 that we had um, a few weeks ago. I don't like that. <laughs> I don't like that. No, no, don't, don't break my heart. I, I, love, I love that 70, something around top of 60s, mm -hmm. early 70s. Mm -hmm. That looks really good. But if we come back home and, and try to see what are some of the economic, uh, burning economic issues that your team thinks is very important for, for us to push out there right now. Well, so first of all, we're, we're talking about the Apapa gridlock, about how that is um, still unresolved and still biting hard. But um, we're hoping that the government, um, I think I heard something about a, a trailer park. That, that, that's bad for to, business. Yes, it's, it's, it's quite bad for business. The implications for cost, for logistic and distribution costs is high. The strain on the road, the infrastructure, because these trailers are parking on the road. And so the road was not was not built for, for that much. For, um, for parking. Yeah, for, for parking. Heavy for, vehicle, for heavy such tonnage. a long period of time. Yeah. And so the, the, there's going to be, um, it's going to have its toll on the road as well. So the implications are, the business costs are quite high. So, But I guess... Um, it's been addressed so, steady by steady. Something just clicked in my head. Uh, have we, I hope we have an, the right agency, Ministry of Transport or whatever it is, mm -hmm. or NEMA, is testing those bridges that we've left those vehicles on. And we're mm -hmm. not talking about cars. We're mm -hmm. talking about these trailers. Mm -hmm. I hope the Ujuelegba, the um, Costain bridges are being retested to okay. find out if they have weakened mm -hmm. over the last months and few uh, one year or two that we've seen these very 
standstill mm -hmm. on those bridges all the way down if those bridges are still fit and proper and if they are not weakening mm -hmm. uh, longer. It's just my, I'm not trying it's, to it's sound alarm. It's, it's a legit concern, I think we should, yes. Yeah, we should just uh, check those bridges all over again yeah. and, and recheck whether they really still fit mm -hmm. as they ought to to stand. I, I'm, I'm worried about that. What, what else is uh, making the headlines here? Also, so, so the global stocks market is, is there's a little bit of um, volatility, but um, we saw there was a marginal recovery um, in yesterday from yesterday in stocks, American stocks as well as Nikkei Japanese um, stock market as well. So from the initial dip, there was over five percent um, percent decline in, in stock markets globally. But then we've seen that the, that has sort of reversed and steadily reversed. It hasn't gone back to what it was before, but it's steadily being reversed. And so apart from that as well, um, diesel prices flat on grid power is above 4,000 which is good as well because especially now in this hot weather we need more um, we have more demand for electricity yeah so. we, know we, need, we need electricity uh, very hot <laughs> it's, you know, it's really hot everywhere yes, it is it is and humid yes seriously hot so that brings us to the doorstep of electricity uh, everybody needs it at this time we need it uh, consumers want it whether they are commercial or, mm -hmm. or private but uh, where are we in terms of production right now? Uh, I can see our output up by 0.8%, 4,186,000 megawatts per hour. Mm. Um, but so, you, sorry, go you, you think this is a decent uh, position? Yes, definitely. Um, for the, although the, our consumption is around 6,500, but um, it's definitely it's, 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 it's much higher than what it was, the average. So that should fall um, about 2,000. It's still hanging in there in the middle. It's, it's still hanging. And mostly, it's, it's, if, if you know that... It, the generation, the actual generation is over 7,000, but somewhere between the generation and um, transmitting, moving it to the national grid before it's been distributed, there's, there's a significant loss. And so that, that is something that has, to be, that has to be dealt with. But looking at what is actually being distributed to homes and the end users, it is about 4,100, 4,186 to be precise, which, which, is, which is good. It's okay. So average output, yes, still there. We still have uh, constraints as far as the total gas, grid yes, constraints, yes. Uh, uh, the, the trunk line, yes. whatever uh, constraints are still uh, are there. So our annual analyzed loss is still about 500 billion. Yes. Um, and so if you look at, I think it's about 1.1 um, for a day. Um, so if you multiply 1 .1 that, 1.1 billion. 1.1 billion, the sector um, lost on that day, on the 6th of, Jan of February. That's a lot of money we can use. Well, yes. Yeah, so that's that's something that it, I guess it needs to be addressed because apart from the the loss in terms of um, the the end users, I mean, we have to now use our own um, find alternatives by, by alternative sources of energy. There's also the loss in the of the sector as well. The sector is also making some losses from from um, being under capacity. Let's go back to the uh, Papa Gridlock, and that is part of the good news and the bad news, and we can put that there on, 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 on the screen. Uh, go back to the... Uh, because when uh, you have this gridlock mm -hmm. with the roads, uh, this is the gateway uh, to the oceans, right? Mm -hmm. so if you talk about logistics and shipping yeah. and maritime, blah, blah, blah. Uh, as long as these roads uh, remain um, gridlocked, locked down, technically speaking, the ships aren't going to be able to move in, mm -hmm. discharge, and go. Yes. So as at the end of January, the ships awaiting birth was about 64. But as at this morning or, or yesterday, it came up to about 74. And so it, it's not because um, there's been an increase in in, um, in importation. It's just because there's a slowdown in, in the moving from, from when the ships come in to when they're, they're offloaded. And so there's been a slowdown in that. And so, I mean, if you looked at PMI, at this time of the year, usually there's, there's usually a dip in um, the inventory stocking. So we know that definitely it's not that the inventory stocking has increased, but that it's just, there's just a slowdown in the offloading process and it's because these trucks are stuck and it's about six days average when a truck comes in and goes out and so it's uh, just and, 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 for, and for ships that's about 73 ships still waiting to birth on yes. the oceans and someone is paying and there and there are more and there are more coming so and so it's just it's just this pile a backlog that is just piling up and someone is paying mm -hmm. yes yeah because there's a cost there isn't it? Yes, uh, definitely. Yes, when you, when you when you when you keep all the 
those vessels on the ocean, mm -hmm. you're the one paying. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're paying the, co for the cost it. is on you anyway. Yes. Uh, the, 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 uh, just whether whichever way you look at it, the cost is on it's on it's on Nigeria, it's on you, the importer, mm -hmm. and you're the one losing money. Mm -hmm. If you've gone to the bank uh, to uh, make loans or take loans or whatever it is or take credit uh, to do import, you're the one. Mm -hmm. uh, um, that's quite that's quite un unfortunate. Uh, but but I, I notice here that as far as the market, current prices are concerned, uh, we seem to be neuter. Yes, yeah, so, um, well, in the past couple of days, um, commodity, domestic commodity prices have stayed flat, although we saw um, some, some movement earlier in the week, but uh, as of um, Tuesday, they, they've stayed flat. Why? Well, just because there's no significant, as, as we said, there's no um, increase in stocking. So no one is really stocking at this time. Um, there's, consumption is expected to pick up gradually from February in the, in the first quarter before it then moves on to the year high around the middle of the year. So, uh, so that's really just what it is. That is just, uh, so there's no, there's no push, there's no demand push, and there, so there's no reason to increase prices as well as the, the consumers, them, the producers or the traders themselves don't want to um, push down the prices because their cost is still high. So Yeah, yeah th th I'm not sure any of these things have any of these are current uh, commodities fall into the uh, type of commodities that go for the Valentine, uh, except for no. now. Maybe and sugar. I, maybe sugar. Yes. Yes. A lot of pastries. Yes. Uh, what would you like to get? A cake. <laughs> Some chocolate. Yeah. I'm offering. Some chocolate. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm just trying to take a look at the list here. Um, that's next week. Isn't yes, it? next week Thursday. Oh, you have the date in your head. <laughs> Oh, no, actually, next week Wednesday. So it's actually next week Wednesday. Next I don't week have Wednesday. the date in my next, head. Next week Wednesday. Okay, okay. Somewhere yes. in the middle of the week. Yeah. And uh, I'm not sure that moved anything as far as commodities is concerned. No, not but on the, on the global scale, uh, we, usually we've been seeing, especially in the demand for cocoa, has been increasing because of the end product of chocolate. So from the beginning of the year, we've seen an increase in the demand of cocoa, which has pushed up, which has supported prices. You mean folks eat more chocolate during Valentine? Yeah. Uh, that's because there's more, there's more demand for there's more demand for chocolate, <laughs> so people are people are buying more chocolates for their significant other and whatnot. So really, that's interesting. In other parts of the world, maybe it hasn't caught on yet in Nigeria, in Nigeria. but yeah, no, it's no. a thin. It's a it's a thin. It's a thin. Uh, th th that's something I'm going to remember. Uh, well, th thank you very much. Uh, I'll look out for next week. Okay. Uh, hope to see you next week uh, uh, and see what you're eating. <laughs> on, 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 on Valentine. And we're going to talk about the Valentine business next week, uh, in case you don't know. We'll look, we'll look at that on that, on, on that day. Let's see what we can uh, put together. Uh, what's called the Valentine business here in Nigeria. Are folks still give cards these days? Yes, you give a card, you give a teddy bear, you give some roses and chocolates. You're sounding like Valentine. Are you only there, folks? I was talking about this market. But that's it's all part of the world of business. Thank you very much. Thank uh, you. Oh, Luda Milari uh, from uh, Adesola from Financial uh, Derivatives.